Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Panda family. In this video, I am going to solve few interesting questions based on semiconductor material. And these are the questions that I have seen in previous years gate examination. So first what I will do is, I will show you the questions. What I want is you just solve those questions by your own. Later you can check for the solution. So here you can freeze the video in between and try this question solution by your own. Later, you can check for the solution over here inside this video, right? So, these are the six questions that I am going to solve in this video. Now, let us start with first question over here. So, if you observe first two questions, those are almost identical to each other. See, question is, the band gap of silicon at 300 Kelvin is, and here in second question, the band gap of silicon at room temperature is. So, usually room temperature that is considered to be 300 Kelvin. So, both questions are same. Now, for silicon material, for silicon material, you should know some basics. See, for, for silicon material, if you talk about band gap, then this band gap that changes with respect to temperature and some basic data that you should know. Like at 0 Kelvin temperature, at 0 Kelvin temperature, energy band gap that is 1.21 electron volt and at 300 Kelvin temperature this energy band gap that is 1.12 electron volt. See these are the ideal data that is there as per IEEE right. So here if you observe options then nearest option that is this B 1.1 at 300 Kelvin and at room temperature over here it is 1.1 right. So first two questions that is almost same and you might be thinking like questions are not getting repeated. So I thought I should show like how questions are getting repeated in gate exam even. So basic fundamentals that should be clear for all of you right. Let us have second interesting question now. This question is quite interesting. Let us read the question first. A small percentage of impurity is added to an intrinsic semiconductor at 300 Kelvin temperature. So here we are having intrinsic semiconductor material which is pure semiconductor material in which we will be adding small percentage of impurities. Which one of the following statement is true for energy band diagram shown in following figure. So here we are given with one energy band diagram. So which statement is true. So here there are few basic things that I would like to explain you for this question. See, with pure semiconductor material, we are adding two types of impurities. By adding pentavalent impurities, means by adding donor impurities, we make n-type semiconductor material. And in p-type semiconductor material, we add acceptor impurities, means trivalent impurities, right. So here, what will happen is, here in between conduction band and valence band, that forbidden energy gap, that will decrease when you add impurities and for that there are few basic things that I would like to explain you over here. Let me note down those data. See when you talk about n type semiconductor material then in n type semiconductor material what we add pentavalent means pi valence electron impurity and in that you can say here we are adding donor impurities right here we are adding donor impurities and by adding donor impurities what we do is we decrease this forbidden energy gap. Now how this forbidden energy gap will decrease in n-type semiconductor material? See this conduction band, this conduction band that will be getting shifted over this side as you add donor impurities. So new energy level, new energy level that will decrease nearer to this conduction band energy, right. So here, here in forbidden energy gap, you will be having reduction, right. And new energy level, new level that will be close to conduction band EC, right. And in P-type semiconductor material, in P-type semiconductor material, we are adding trivalent impurities, means acceptor impurities right so here there will be holes in terms of charge carriers over here with p type semiconductor material so in this this forbidden energy gap will decrease but in that 
this valence band that is getting shifted over this side with new energy level right so new level new level that will be close to new level that will be close to ev means see here this level that is getting shifted from ec side but when you add p type semiconductor when you add acceptor impurities to make p type semiconductor material at that time this level will get shifted over here right new energy level that will be coming over here somewhere over here so now we need to read the options so you can definitely understand this like see this is what pure semiconductor material in which as per this explanation what we are adding n type semi n type semiconductor material that we are making by adding donor impurities right so here intrinsic semiconductor doped with pentavalent atoms to form n type semiconductor material so yes this is the right option over here why the reason is here new energy level that is getting shifted nearer to this ec right and as if you add acceptor impurities then new energy level that will be shifted over this side which is close to ev so that is how this option is correct right let us have another interesting question over here so this question is based on doping in silicon let us read the question first n type silicon is obtained by doping silicon with so in n type what we do we do pentavalent impurities right so in n type we do pentavalent impurities here options are given see germanium that is semiconductor material so in that valence electrons are four so this cannot be your option as in n type we should be having five valence electrons right aluminium is trivalent right so in n type we need to have pentavalent so this is false boron is having trivalent impurity so you can say this is also false as we need to have pentavalent with n type so phosphorus that is pentavalent so that is having five electrons as a valence electrons over here so this is our correct option over here for this question right now let us have next question so in next question in an n type silicon crystal at room temperature which of the following can have concentration of 4 into 10 to the power 19 per centimeter cube so here concentration or you can say density that is given so which is close to this that is the question so here few basic information that you should know like you see when we talk about silicon atoms then with silicon material with silicon material how much density is there let me give that data to you see with silicon material silicon atom density that is 5 into 10 to the power 22 per centimeter cube so obviously this is not close to this so this option is false now here if you read these options then if you see valence electrons so with silicon how many valence electrons are there with one atom four valence electrons are there with one atom so silicon atom density is this so valence electron density will be this into four so that will be this into four means five into four so that will be 20 into 10 to the power 22 per centimeter cube so this data is also not close to this so this option is also false now we need to see holes and dopant atom so when we talk about holes and dopant atom then first we need to see which material is given to you n type material that is given to you so first let me show you some basic information like when we talk about ni intrinsic concentration for silicon pure silicon so that is 1.5 into 10 to the power 10 per centimeter cube right now here what we want to do we need to have n type silicon so for n type silicon for n type silicon for n type silicon you should be having higher concentration compared to ni right and here here p will be having means holes will be having lower concentrations compared to this so for n type for n type higher concentration is there for electrons or you can say dopant right and for holes for holes you will be having lower concentration compared to this so compared to this if you see this data is greater so what we are doing we are talking about number of electrons concentration that is greater compared to this which means here dopant atom that will be your answer now if you have been given with 
P-type silicon instead of N-type. In that case, what would be your choice? Dopant atom that will be holes and minority will be electrons, right? So, with P-type, with P-type, holes will be greater compared to this. That is how you will have to understand things, right? Now, let us move on to next interesting question. So, this question is quite interesting and tricky. And this question is based on compound semiconductor material. Let me read the question first. See, here question is a bar of gallium arsenide, GAAS. See, compound semiconductor that is given to us, GAAS, gallium arsenide, is doped with silicon such that the silicon atom occupy gallium and arsenic site in GAAS. So, GAS that is compound semiconductor material, right? Silicon is pure semiconductor material. GAS is compound semiconductor material. Now, inside compound semiconductor material, if you add a semiconductor material, then what will happen? That type of question is this, right? So, which one of the following statement is true? So, here we need to understand how silicon atom will act as a P-type and in arsenic side and N-type in gallium side. That is how we need to understand things. Right. So, before I give answer over here, let me explain you the basic concept over here. See, when you talk about gallium arsenide, then in gallium, in gallium, how many valence electrons are there? Three valence electrons are there. And when we talk about arsenide, then how many valence electrons are there? Five valence electrons are there. See, that is how things are there with compound semiconductor, which is gallium arsenide. And combination of this, is making compound semiconductor but in this what we are doing we are adding silicon so you see what we are doing we are adding silicon over here so see silicon that we are adding right so silicon is having how many uh, valence electrons four silicon is having how many valence electrons four now what will happen when you add sil silicon over here you see when you add silicon then you see gallium is having 3, but when you add silicon, then silicon is having 4. So, here we are adding additional electron. So, at gallium side, we are adding additional electron. So, which is forming N type. Additional electron means donor impurities that we are adding come with respect to Ga. And when you talk about with respect to arsenide, so here arsenide is having 5 valence electron, but silicon is having 4. So, here 1 electron is less. And as one electron is less, you can say acceptor kind of impurity that we are adding as silicon over here. So, that makes this as P type over here, right? Now, let us read the options over here. So, silicon atom act as a P type, silicon atom act as a P type in arsenic side, in arsenic side and N type dopant in gallium side. N type dopant in gallium side. Yes, so this option is correct. So I don't need to read other options, right? So when you add silicon in compound semiconductor, at that time that silicon will act as an N type with gallium side and P type with arsenide side. That is how things will happen inside. Quite interesting question, isn't it? So I hope you have understood this. And this type of questions that frequently come in competitive examination. So, for that, you need to have basic understanding. And I'll try my level best to sort out que queries and questions over here. So, please give your valuable feedback that helps us to understand how things are happening with students. Thank you so much for watching this video.